All right, it's day 376 of my ginger germination experiment. Uh, not all that much has changed since I last spoke to you. You know, this lamp, it has the 830 lumen LED bulb inside of it. And it's a more, you know, white color, which means the appearance will be uh, more normal for the color. This is pretty close to what I'm seeing in real life for the greenness. So these leaves are very dark green and I think they're kind of struggling to get enough light even though I've read that ginger is a shade plant. So I have this new light meter that I'd like to introduce. It's HS1010. Now geez, I don't remember what the brand is for this. So yeah, I got this on Amazon.com uh, for about twenty dollars in 2014 money. You know, mm. it doesn't even say the brand on this, but anyway, it seems like a pretty good deal for uh, what I need. You know, it's got this uh, rubber cap on top. Let me just remove that, and you know, that just looks like a cheap white plastic ball, but it's actually the sensor. I'm going to turn this on and it measures things in lux. So this completely changes the game. For instance, if I hold it here, that's kind of equivalent to uh, what this leaf is getting over here. You know, 1,500 lux. If I go over here. What is that getting? Mm. So if it's not directly in you know, line of sight of a light source, then it's not going to get much. Oh, no, 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 wait. That's uh, times 10. I'm looking at my camera screen. It's too small to see almost. So if you look here, that would be 1,030 uh, or 40 lux. And if you look here, that's about 980 lux. Here you have 800 lux, and keep in mind, by me getting so close with the camera, I'm actually physically blocking some of the light as well. That's 800 lux. So there's kind of a range, you know. This place gets 1100. So the range seems to be from 800 at the very bottom all the way to, you know, uh, the mid-1000s. Right here, depending on where you are, you know, this spot gets almost 2,000 lux, 1,800, I would say. So let's just say the range is 800 to 1,800 lux. And if you want to compare that to, let's say, putting this directly under a bulb, you know, this gets 30,000 lux with this. Uh, it's the same kind of bulb that gives off 830 lumens. And if you get closer, you're going to get 440,000 lux. And these plants, if you push that here, you know, that's still 12,000 lux. 121 times 100. So depending on where you place it, you know, it'll change. So if I move this more to the center under the light, it's going to get more 100. Let's see, that's 14,200 lux. So that's pretty good. I mean, these little plants here from my mystery plant series are getting basically almost 10 times as much light as these two shoot systems. I mean, these two shoots. This whole thing is, you know, one shoot system. So if we go over here to where I have my ginger traditionally, I've recreated this uh, state here with a solar reflector. That's an empty pot that I'm going to use for something else. But, you know, I'd have these blinds drawn, figuring it wouldn't make a big difference. But, you know, if I have this here, it's only getting almost 700 lux, 680s, you know, 690s. If I move this up here, it's even less. 
You know, of course, if I have this facing the window, it gets a little bit more, but, you know, in actuality, if you had ginger plants here, you'd have the light reflecting off this thing and getting onto the other side of the plant. So this bulb can actually measure things like that very accurately. But let me show you what happens if I pull these blinds away. Okay, so the blinds are out of the picture. If I have this facing the sun, get 1100 here. Well, you know, in the morning and just a few minutes ago, I could have gotten up to 1800, but now I can only get slightly above 1000 for the readings. So anyway, yeah, the sun's going down. And if you look at this hill, you can see what the main problem is with my apartment situation. So this light set up, despite having, you know, two other light sources nearby flanking the ginger plant, are woefully inadequate. Uh, this thing doesn't have a reflector. This is really only good for uh, videography, I suppose although it could be done much better under something like that. You know, if I just have my specimen there and I'm filming it, it would be way brighter, which is uh, really good for videography. So I think these leaves have had a little bit of trouble uncurling, and they're so dark because the plant is trying to make as much chlorophyll as possible to capture every single photon of light. See, this thing never uncurled, so there might be something, you know, I wouldn't say wrong necessarily, but it's suboptimal growth that's causing this kind of stuff, in my opinion. So I fill the water tray with 0.5% hydrogen peroxide yesterday. That should, you know, soak into the soil mixture that I created. And if there's too much water, I'll start to see guttation again. I haven't seen it for, you know, maybe close to a month now. It's been so long since I last watered and I haven't seen any fungus gnats at all. So, yeah, I'm going to buy more of these light reflectors and LED bulbs, and that will hopefully rectify the situation very soon. Okay, it's day 279, and I put another clamp lamp here. My melons aren't getting enough sun in the shade with just this clamp lamp alone, so I decided to use this for my ginger and move the melons into the sun. So for my light meter, you know, it's getting over 3,000 lux here, over 3,000 lux here. Yeah, that's uh, 5,000 something, 6,000 something. You know, it's getting a pretty even 3,000, I'd say 2,000 to 6,000 all around. So that's roughly three times the amount of light it was receiving before. Remember, just uh, without this clamp lamp two days ago, it's getting like 800 down there and, you know, uh, about 2,000 at the top. So now it's getting 2,000 to 6,000 all over. And I think that'll dramatically accelerate the growth rate. And this plant will look a lot healthier and have new shoots hopefully coming out of the sand pretty soon. All right, so last year, if you remember, I had my ginger pot over there. There's still a stain on the balcony. But, you know, if I have this flux meter here, and that's times 100 over there. It's like 4,000 lux, you know, 5,000 lux. Um, you know, I'm going to get six or 7,000, depending on where the leaves are. But this place is as well illuminated as when I'm getting indoors. So I'm considering just between this spring and fall equinox, moving my ginger plant out here again. But there's the issue to consider of, you know, indoors it's probably gonna get 16 hours of this kind of light, you know, at 2.30 p.m. Uh, whereas, you know, for most of the morning, I mean, it's a lot dimmer than this. I'd have to take measurements, but I think it would be almost insignificant. 
amount of light I receive. And as you know, I tried to have it in direct sun like here last year, in the beginning after I moved it outside in spring, and that was disastrous. You know, it basically got cooked during the summer. I can't stand too much direct light, especially the root system. Okay, it's day 389. Sully is doing pretty well. And as you can see, the growth for this shoot is basically complete. You know, it has uh, this final thing, which I think won't unfurl. The internode lengths got shorter towards the end, and that always seems to happen. You know, it's somewhere towards the early middle part where the internodes are, are really long, like that or that. Um, that so at the beginning you know the well actually that's kind of long too and so I guess the inner nodes are very long until you reach the very end and that helps the leaves get up to uh, the sunlight source and it's the same way for this I mean look at how long those inner nodes are when it gets to the end it does that and likewise uh, this is a leaf that never quite on curls. So here's my trusty and fun light meter. You know, it gets 9,000 lux over there, 8,000 something over here. You know, this tip, it gets 6,000, uh, 4,000. So this lamp is not all that effective because it doesn't have a reflector like this one. And I'm going to replace it with something more effective. I just haven't gotten around to unpacking. And I'm going to give it a few more days to see if it acclimates. Um, you know, but it seems to be doing fine. I would say maybe up to 20,000. That's pretty safe for this plant that can't tolerate full sun all the time. Oh, and the other thing is I use this camera brush to dust off the leaves. I've already done it, but indoors uh, leaves can get really dusty. So... This will help keep the plant looking aesthetic, keep everything looking shiny, and also uh, increase photosynthesis. So this is the base of Sully. And if you look over here, it's very good news. We have a new shoot coming out after a long time of nothing ever happening. Okay, it's day 392, and this thing wasn't done growing after all. So this unfurled. And there's a little shoot inside of it. Well, not a shoot, but another leaf. I don't know if it's just going to end up like that and, you know, just be a straight point. Or are they meant to all become leaves eventually? And is this uh, growth stoppage some kind of anomaly because this thing is nearly parallel to the ground? You know, it's going to fall over by gravity. But, you know, I learned things are pseudo stems uh, they're hollow tightly wound funnels of leaves so it's unlikely that they're going to break they don't get very long either so if we go down here you know that new shoot is starting to extend it's doing nicely I hope this thing can be more upright than the other two shoots and perhaps have much bigger leaves as well so that's basically it and We'll see if this lumen range of, you know, 2,000 to 10,000 plus will help things uh, really accelerate in terms of growth.